You got to accentuate the positive. Mm -hmm. Well, here we go. First one this year, I guess. Just a moment, Mr. Crosby. I'd like a word with you before you begin. You would, huh? Yes, sir. My card, sir. Let's see, what's this? I'm vice president of the Columbia Broadcasting System. My name is Hubble Ackerman, Jr. Oh, sit down. (laughs) Sit down, Jr. I got some Chesterfields to sell here. I'll be busy for a minute. Well, before you begin, I'd like a word with you regarding network policy. That's a good idea, network policy. Very good idea. In fact, with Hope coming here tonight, the network ought to take out the biggest policy it can get. (laughs) Get a double indemnity deal. (laughs) That's just the point, Mr. Crosby. What do you mean? We of the network understand that tonight you intend to continue a story which you and Mr. Hope started last night on uh, <clears throat> that other network. That's right. We started last night on NBC. Oh, Mr. Crosby, I do wish you'd try to be more of a company man. <laughs> well, I try, but I'm just not a square, I guess. I can't, <laughs> I can't have it. Must I remind you, sir, that CBS has purchased you lock, stock, and barrel? Now, you guys will buy anything. (laughs) I'm sorry, Mr. Ackerman, but Bob and I have cooked this little thing up, and he's coming here tonight to do it with me. No, No, he isn't. Mr. Hope had his chance to be a member of the CBS family, and he refused. Now the ship has sailed. Aloha. (laughs) Mr. Crosby, I don't like to flaunt my authority, but this much I can tell you. If you do this broadcast tonight, it'll be over my dead body. Oh. Well. (laughs) Hoppy must have sold me a real gun. The theme, John Scott. Someone waits for me. Welcome you to the Bing Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield, produced and transcribed in Hollywood with John Scott Trotter and his orchestra, Judd Collins with the Bears and Bing's guests, Miss Judy Garland and Mr. Bob Hope. And now here's a fellow who's just had a falling out with the CBS vice president, Mr. Bing Crosby. <laughs> he fell out. I'm still here. <laughs> well, we got to get rolling now, Ken, so if you'll drag the late vice president away from the mic, make a little room here, I'll introduce our honored guest of the evening. Folks... One of the more choice contenders in the season's cinema sweepstakes is MGM's tuneful tinted tin type titled Summer Stock. Tonight we boast the presence of the star of that merry piece, Miss Judy Garland. Oh, thank you, Bing. Thank you. Yeah, that was a long introduction. What a build-up. Well, I'm not going to give Hope any, so I thought I'd give you a double help. <laughs> but enough of this here chit-chat, what Crosby. Chit-chat is I'm, uh, I'm Captain Judy Garland of the FBI. Oh, you're going to pinch me for shooting that vice president, huh? Yeah, I'm taking you to the calaboose. Now, just a minute. You can't arrest me. I plead the unwritten law. And what's that? I don't know. It ain't been written yet. <laughs> Sonnet. But Captain Judy, it seems a shame to make you come here for nothing. As long as you're here, why don't we sing something? Well, swell, let's sing Sam's song. Okay, what part do you want? I'll take Gary's part, but I'll lay back. I won't push her like he did. <laughs> push me, huh? Yeah. Gotta play that record when I get home. You see what he did? John Scott, we're ready, boy. <laughs> Here's a happy tune you love to crew. They call it Sam's song. Catchy as can be, the melody. They call it Sam's song. No 
nothing on your mind And then you find your humming sand song Why, it makes you grin Gets under your skin As only a song can do People that you meet Out on the street Are whistling Sam's song Everyone you see Will soon agree Ah, it's such a grand song So forget your troubles And wear a smile You'll find you'll never go wrong If you learn to prune This happy tune They call it Sam's song we develop this classic American theme just a little further. <laughs> the happy tune. That'll bring you a smile all the while when you croon it, you're reeling in silence. And the title is Sam's Song. Catchy as can be. With a slight little beat and the melody sweet, keeps you tapping your feet. And the title is Sam's Song. And nothing on your mind. But the news of the day and the bills you must pay. Keep your hair turning gray, but you still have a Sam's Song. Keep pitching here. Why, it makes you grin. Gets under your skin. As only a song can do. People that you meet. Hello, Joe. What you know and remind me to motel and business is slow, but I'm whistling Sam's Song. Has a story to tell or a gimmick to sell, but agree that it's swell and it's really a grand song. So forget your troubles and wear a smile. You'll find you'll never go wrong if you learn to croon like a lock in the park who is making this my serenade in the dark with the chorus of Sam's song. If you learn to croon a happy tune, they call it Sam's song. Coke says it, Godfrey says it, and Bing says it. Tobaccos that smell milder smoke milder. That's the real test for mildness in a cigarette, and as old as tobacco itself. All right, Bing. Tobaccos that smell milder smoke milder. Here's how you can prove it, friend. Make your next pack Chesterfield. Then open them, smell them, and smoke them. That's right. Open them. Open your pack of Chesterfields. Then smell them. Smell that milder Chesterfield aroma. An aroma no other cigarette has. Compare it with the cigarettes you've been smoking. Now smoke Chesterfields and prove what every tobacco farmer knows. Tobaccos that smell milder, smoke milder. And Chesterfield mildness follows through and leaves a clean, fresh taste in your mouth. That's right, Bing. You know, folks, America's first cigarette taste panel composed of smoking experts, after smoking leading brands of cigarettes over a period of more than a year, told us this fact. Chesterfield is the only cigarette in which members of the panel found no unpleasant aftertaste. Take a tip from us, folks. Make your next pack Chesterfields, and you'll always buy a Chesterfield. Here's Get Happy, a great rhythmic song done in great style by Miss Garland. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. Sun is shining, come on, get happy. The Lord is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to the promised land. We're heading across the river, wash your sins away in the tide. It's so peaceful on the other side. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. You better chase all your cares away. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. Get ready for the judgment day. Forget your troubles, come on, get happy. Chase your cares away. Hallelujah, get happy. Before the judgment day. The sun is shining, come on, get happy. The Lord is waiting to take your hand. Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to be going to the promised land. Head and cross the river, wash your sins away in the tide. It's quiet and peaceful on the other side. 
side. Forget the troubles, get happy, your cares fly away. Shout out with Hallelujah, get happy, get ready for your judgment day. Come on, get happy, chase your cares away. Shout out Hallelujah, come on, get happy, get ready for the judgment day. Sun is shining, come on, get happy. Lord is waiting to take your hand. Hallelujah, come on, get happy. We're going to the promised land. Throw your sins away in the tide It's all so peaceful on the other side Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy You better chase all your cares away Shout hallelujah, come on, get happy Get ready Get ready Get ready For the judgment day Bravo, Judy. Wonderful. I tell you, gal, when you sing, you give everybody in this American country something to shoot at. <laughs> Say, where's Hope? Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Bob Fancy Pants Hope. <laughs> Chesterfield's new fair-haired boy. Now they got three of us. I'm fair-haired, Godfrey's red hair, and then there's Crosby. <laughs> Don't forget Terry Como. He's in there pitching for us on television. Please, don't stop them, please. <laughs> well, Judy Garland, say, you're a sight for sore eyes. Well, thank you. Well, I'm here, too. I know. You gave me the sore eyes. <laughs> you're the one that's on television. You've given everybody erratic orbs. <laughs> uh, don't be bitter, old-timer. You'll get into that new medium yet. I suppose so. They're eventually. working on the widescreen. You'll make it. <laughs> I imagine they'll get to me. Eventually, they'll start <laughs> scraping the top of the barrel. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> It's about time you had your barrel scraped. Now, just... <laughs> Say, Bob, incidentally, now that you're with Chesterfield and you're a guest here, mm -hmm. suggestion, please. Yeah. Why don't sure. you try and conduct yourself with a little, little savoir faire, a little, je ne sais quoi, joie de vivre, esprit de coeur, dernier cri. Look, VN Rose. <laughs> Don't try to dazzle me with that stale French of yours. I could dazzle you with English, Bob. <laughs> dazzle be enough out of you. <laughs> <laughs> Say, listen, you vice president killer, why'd you take a shot at me? That shot came from the audience. <laughs> that couldn't happen on my show. We frisk everybody before they come in. show next week, I'm going to wear a diving bell. <laughs> Don't worry about Flabby, Judy. He's harmless. He has to wear a used feed bag so he can feel his oats. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Say, listen. Mm. I want to say one thing. You're feeling pretty gay tonight, I'm aren't you, bubbly. Dad? Yes, I'm bubbly. Has Gary got a sore throat or something? <laughs> Is he going to have his tonsils out? Well, if huh? he does, i got a priority. And let me tell you something, Robert. Last August, when you were out of work, just want to remind you of something. And just think back a little. What? what? Last August, when you were out of work, yeah. you were singing an entirely different tune. Yeah, what about that offer I had to sell Schmuggleheim hog food? <laughs> I wish you'd stop inferring that you set me in with Chesterfield. Well, I did set you in there. I not only got you a wonderful job, but I fixed it so you could smoke the best cigarette in the world. Listen, I always smoke Chesterfield. Yeah, but now you're smoking whole ones. <laughs> Anyway, Judy, last summer I had heard Bob was despondent, dejected, unhappy, desolate, and unemployed. <laughs> so one day I walked over to his house. I found him in the barbecue pit rooting around and foraging for morsels of meat left over from his more affluent days. <laughs> as I drew closer, I heard him singing as he dusted the ashes off a charred meat bowl. <laughs> Schmoggle Heinz hog food, oink, 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 oink. <laughs> Margot Heinz hog food, oink, 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 oink. 
What's going on? I'm working on a hog food singing commercial. I think I can land the Schmogelheim account. Bobsy, got hmm. big news for you. I'm going to take you to see the Chesterfield people, to see Mr. Crampton. He's the head man. You know. Oh, Bing, you're a doll. How can I ever repay you? Gosh, I feel terrible when I think of all the awful things I've said about you and all the wonderful things you do for me. Oh, Bob. No, really, Bing, I've been a cad to you. I've treated you miserably, and all the time you've been my benefactor. I should grovel in the dust at your feet. Well, Bob, you're appreciative. You're humble. You're, you're grateful. You're faking. <laughs> I thought I did that very well. Men have gotten an Oscar for less. <laughs> Didn't you? <laughs> get an Oscar till they award him for vagrancy. <laughs> now, come on, will you? And be on your best behavior. Really watch it, will you, kid? Because the Chesterfield people, they never heard of you. Never heard of you, so you got everything in your favor. Now, here's the Chesterfield office right here. Before we go in, let's see how you look. Now. Oh, slip on my jacket. Pretty spiffy, huh? Uh -huh. I had it made special to impress the sponsor. It's a Chesterfield. It's a beautiful color. Huh? Sort of a golden brown. Don't hold yourself back. You know. <laughs> That's all right. I think we've got enough out of that. Go ahead. <laughs> love the color, do. I really yeah. love it. It's mm -hmm. sort of a golden brown, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's made out of real tobacco. <laughs> well, you got the pouch for it. Now, before yeah. we go <laughs> Butter hips. Watch it, watch it. Come on now, Joker. Let's go on in. Okay. Oh, good morning, Mr. Crosby. Good morning. Well, I see you've been out in the fields picking tobacco this morning. No, that's a coat. There's a man under it. <laughs> go right in, Mr. Crosby. Mr. Crampton's expecting Thank you. you. Good morning, Mr. Crampton. Well, good morning, Bing. Oh, I see you've been out in the field this morning picking tobacco. <laughs> Mr. Crampton, that's a coat. <laughs> Bob, part the leaves. Will you stick your head out and say hello to Mr. Crampton? Huh? <laughs> How do you do, Mr. Crampton? <laughs> How are you, Crampy? Tobaccos that smell milder smoke milder. Well, bless my soul. This man has had his basic training. Oh, he's quick. He's quick, very quick. Not talented. <laughs> well, Bing, don't just stand there. Have a seat. And, uh, Mr. Ho? Yes, sir? Uh, you curl up right there in the ashtray. <laughs> hey, Mr. Crafton, I, I spoke to you about Mr. Hope on the phone, you remember? He's a pal of mine. I was wondering if we could find a place for him in the Chesterfield family. My buddy... This fellow's desperate, Mr. Crampton. He's very anxious to work, and of course, money isn't important. No, I'll take the factory. <laughs> Say, uh, that's uh, rather amusing. Not very amusing, just rather. <laughs> I uh, suppose we could use another program, but, uh, Bing, uh, do you really believe this man has the figure and the personality... To get through his advanced training? Advanced training? What's that? Oh, Bob, you see, all of us fellows who work for Chesterfield, we have to go out and meet the public. Each of us is assigned to a certain territory. Well, I like to get out and meet the people, and I can hustle plenty of Chesterfields. Where do I operate? My secretary will give you your cigarette tray and your black nylons. Have your hair done and report for work at Zero's tonight. <laughs> You mean I have to be a cigarette girl at Ciro's? What are you beefing about? I'm working the Macombo. <laughs> Holy smoke, are you Carlotta? <laughs> yes, I am. I am indeed. No! My black curls fooled you, didn't they? <laughs> and to think I parked across the street until 4 a.m. last Thursday waiting for Crosby to count up. <laughs> Fracture. I'll tell how you acted on the way home. You must have had those curls glued on real tight. We had quite a tussle. Uh, it was rough. Plenty rough. I did enjoy slapping your face. Yes, you and did. And incidentally, I'll thank you to return my garter. <laughs> Uh, 
I may as well. All the snap's gone out of it anyhow. <laughs> Imagine me thinking you were Carlotta. I don't see how you fooled me. You look more like a used Carlotta. Oh. <laughs> Madman Mutz is writing on this show now. <laughs> well, there you are, Judy. That's how it happened. Don't believe a word he says. Come here, Judy. I'll give you the real load. Now, if my two charming compatriots will excuse me, I have a song to sing right, right about here. It's called I Cross My Fingers. Step up here to the mic, Robert. We're going to tell everyone how to be his own cigarette expert. Well, that's been kicked around. What's this? What's been kicked well, around? Well, all summer long on the radio, I heard people say, be your own beverage expert, be your own bedsheet expert, be your own meatball expert, be your own expert expert. expert, expert. expert. <laughs> well, that's okay. As Fred Allen once said, yeah. imitation is the sincerest form of radio. What do you say? The epic remarks. But remember, we were first with the expert idea. Right you are. Be your own cigarette expert. Take your own pack of Chesterfields. Then open them, smell them, and smoke them. Yes, open your pack of Chesterfields and smell them. What you smell is a milder tobacco aroma you'll find only in Chesterfields. Compare it with a cigarette you've been smoking. Then smoke those Chesterfields and prove for yourselves that tobaccos that smell milder smoke milder. Make your next pack Chesterfields, and you'll always buy Chesterfields. And remember this, Chesterfields mildness follows through, and it leaves a clean, fresh taste in your mouth. <laughs> One of, the, one of the summer's big hits. In fact, looks like a song that's going to uh, linger into the sear and autumn months, too. Mona Lisa, Mona Lisa, men have named you. You're so like the lady with the mystic smile. Is it only because you're lonely they have blamed you for that Mona Lisa stranger in your smile? Do you smile to tempt a lover, Mona Lisa? Or is this your way to hide a broken heart? Many dreams 
have been brought to your doorstep. They just lie there, and they die there. Are you warm? Are you real, Mona Lisa? Or just a cold and lonely, lovely work of You sang that quite well, Moaning Lisa. <laughs> Say, Judy, what are you doing after the show? Well, I thought I'm, I might go and see the new Clark Gable Barbara Stanwyck picture. Oh, the new Metro Golden Mayor picture, the one called To Please the Lady. Isn't that the one about the Indianapolis auto races? Say, that gives me an idea, Bing. Why don't you and I make an auto race picture? I can drive, and I'm sure I can get Paramount to put the wheels on you. <laughs> you have to put wheels on me to get me near the joint. <laughs> me, too. There's a big line. <laughs> <laughs> Many years in show business. Me too. <laughs> that is what did it beautifully did. <laughs> and Bard, nice. <laughs> Wait a minute now. All right. Thing, hmm. who's your guest next week? Next week, Judy, our guest will be Miss Judy Garland and Mr. Bob Hope. Hey, how do you get the same guest two weeks in a row? Well, I don't know about Judy, but I got you in a one sense. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Judy, let's go. Wait, wait, uh, back. <laughs> you kids can't leave till we've all said goodnight to Irene. Oh, that's right. Everybody's saying goodnight to Irene these days. Here we go. Now get to bed, Irene. <laughs> Irene, good She sleeps in pajamas Sometimes she sleeps in a gown But when they both in the laundry Irene is the talk of the town She combs every hair in her hair. <laughs> she puts it all up neat in curlers. <laughs> then she hangs it on the post of the bed. <laughs> Burglar broke in Irene's bedroom. The dear girl was sleeping in peace. Then Irene, she fought like a tiger. Till the burglar called the police. <laughs> Dream, dream.
think all the things are just drop dead. Chesterfield, the best cigarette for you to smoke. The Bing Crosby Show, presented by Chesterfield, was produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Bill Morrow and Murdoch McKenzie. Tune in next week and hear Bing and his guests, Miss Judy Garland and Bob Hope. Remember, friends, October is Community Chest Month, so give generously. Give enough for all Red Feather services.